What is going on everybody? How is everyone doing today? Welcome back here today to another reaction video and today we're going to be reacting to Bleacher Report's fairly new article ranking every NBA team's top three offseason trade targets so this will be an interesting one. Like always I will leave a link to the article in the description below and if you guys are wondering the Ultimate Rebuilding series the first real episode is going to be out tomorrow on Wednesday so you can be on the lookout for that. And yeah without further ado we got 30 teams to go through uh top three trade targets so we're gonna have 90 players mentioned today. So the Atlanta Hawks, we have Brandon Ingram in a sign and trade, Spencer Dinwiddie, Aaron Holiday. Hmm. Um, obviously, I just usually like to give my opinion on the players, not reading the article because then that would take a lot longer than give my opinion. But I'm just going to see, like, obviously Ingram, he would fit so many teams and he'd be a perfect fit on this team. He'd be a nice kind of number two next to Trey Young on the offensive side. He could definitely bolster their defense and it doesn't hurt adding a good defender to that team because they have Clint Capella. They're a good rim protecting center. They have DeAndre Hunter, who's a solid defender, but really who else is playing defense on that team? Kevin Herter, probably a below average, an average, below average defender. John Collins, not a great inside defender. Not perfect or not good, but... He's not terrible, but he's not good. Um, and Trey Young is pretty horrible. So adding Brandon Ingram would be huge on that side of the ball. Don't know how he and John Collins would fit, but you'd take a 22, 23-year-old wing over a power forward who can't play defense. Yeah, you'd probably build your team around Brandon Ingram, but he's not going anywhere. Um, he's probably staying with the Pels. Uh, Dinwiddie, he'd be your sixth man, but like, is Dinwiddie going to be any different for the Hawks than he would be for the Nets? Backing up kind of a better point guard who's more of an offensive player than a defensive player. I don't know. I just, what, what asset are you giving up for Spencer Dinwiddie unless you end up with like the eighth pick? Then would you do that for Dinwiddie? Maybe. Um, and then Aaron Holiday, I think would be a beautiful backup point guard uh, for your team. I don't know. I think Indy still really likes him. Uh, obviously, he's going to be backing up Malcolm Brogdon probably throughout the next four years or whenever he'll be a restricted free agent, which should be, I don't know, he was a 20, he was a 2018 pick, right? So, I mean, that'll be ways away. All right. Interesting. Boston. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Uh, Boston's big man collection has exceeded expectations this season, but it remains a weak spot or the weak spot of an otherwise heavyweight contender. Uh, you're giving up Jalen Brown, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> if you're trying to get Joel Embiid, all right, that's kind of huge. You're definitely offering Jalen Brown and probably picks, like definitely the Memphis picks and three of the first because Embiid is considered a top 10 player in the NBA. I think he's, what, three years older? Off the top of my head, guessing three or four years older than Brown. Obviously, there's the injury concerns, and maybe you'd rather have a wing, a two-way wing at an elite level, or if you think Brown can get there, than kind of a center who can't really space the floor all that well. But no, Embiid's a great defender. He's a great inside scorer. He's an okay shooter. He's not great. If he takes like one three night, it's better than him taking four. He's a great post-up player. I ah, just, okay, that one just might be for, I don't know. Uh, Collins doesn't really fit that team at all, because you're going to have to bump him down to the five, and that makes no sense, unless... You moved Hayward for him, but how is that happening? Because, yeah, I would like a Kemba, Brown, Tatum, Collins, one through four. Then you figure out your center because Brown and Tatum are both really good defenders. And then if you can get a better rim protecting center. But Daniel Tice is, I think, I don't I don't really agree with Collins. And getting Patty Mills, I think they could definitely use a, back, a better backup point guard than like a Brad Wanamaker or a Carson Edwards. So that one is interesting. Don't know how they get that done salary-wise um, until Mills is a free agent. But these two... I don't really see those being even logical solutions without really hurting your team. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets, so they're adding that third guy, uh, Beal, Old Depot, Gobert. I'll talk about Gobert. Don't really see the need for Gobert. You already have Jared Allen, who isn't near as good or nearly as good as Rudy Gobert, but he's still a serviceable center, and you really, I mean, yeah, he would help out your defense. And if you're willing to part ways with Jared Allen and Karis LeVert for Gobert, go for it, but... I don't know. Uh, so it says then we need Levert and Allen our names. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Beal would be the top guy, definitely. I'd be willing to part ways with Jared Allen, Levert, and maybe even Dinwiddie or Jared Allen, Levert, and two first round picks. I would be willing to do so. Oladipo is a little bit more interesting because he didn't play much this year. He came back from injury. He's going to be 2021 20, free agent. Nobody, his value probably isn't where it's going to, or it's going to be where it would have been like a year ago, right? Like he's going to be an expect or he's going to be a pending free agent in 2021. He just came off a pretty like disappointing comeback, but what you would expect, obviously when players come back from major injuries, they're, they struggle to start. They definitely struggle. So you really can't knock Oladipo, but his value isn't going to be something where it's worth like two picks and two good players, like because he's going to be a pending free agent and who's going to really want to pay that for Oladipo. It's not like this is Kevin Durant or Kawhi Leonard. It's Victor Oladipo, who's a great player. He was an all-star, but 
pending free agent, I don't know. So, I would see, like, maybe Gobert. Like, are you willing to part ways with Levert and Allen? And maybe Utah would be willing to do so because Gobert is going to be a free agent in 2021. And he's going to demand a lot of money in Utah because I believe he's going to be eligible for the super max. I think he might be. If he's going to be all NBA third team this year, what? Uh, well, it depends if AD's a power forward. But uh, if he makes an all NBA team, I think he might be. Or maybe it's since he wins defensive player of the year. I don't know. But if he qualifies for the super max, maybe Utah, the best decision would be not to give Rudy Gobert the max and try to get some value for him. Uh, moving over to Charlotte, Ingram sign and trade, Woods sign and trade, and Harrell sign and trade. Oh, well, these are cop outs because they could just, these are free agents. This is an unrestricted free agent. Oh, cop out, cop out. Um, but I don't like, I mean, obviously Ingram would fit any team, so I'm not going to keep talking about Ingram. Christian Wood, they need a center. If they, they want to try to, sh like, trot out a Grand Rosier backcourt, Bridges at the three, Washington at the four, they need a center. And I thought it'd be really interesting. Say they get the fourth overall pick, right? Or even if they like Rudy Gobert over Wiseman and a Kongwu, and they get the second overall pick or the third overall pick, would they trade that pick and maybe a protected pick down the line or, I don't know, like uh, maybe like a Terry Rozier, I don't know, for Rudy Gobert? Would they do that? They do need a center. That is kind of their one glaring hole on the team. So Montrez Harrell could be that guy, and a lot of people are linking Montrez to signing with Charlotte because he's probably going to want to get paid. Charlotte will have cap space, so maybe that is going to be uh the or the perfect kind of fit unless he ends up going back to the club so christian wood would be an interesting fit but i don't really see him leaving detroit he's restricted right either way i don't know he no no i think he's unrestricted but i don't think he will uh he'll leave detroit but i wouldn't mind that fit i don't i feel like him and pj washington are similar players and i don't know how would that front court would look defensively but it's interesting it's interesting chicago drew holiday josh richardson mo bamba Okay, um, Drew Holiday would be great. I would love him. I mean, he can guard three, so I wouldn't mind him being your small forward, definitely. But who are you giving up for Drew Holiday? Maybe their top 10 pick this year? And then, I don't think the, I don't know. You would have to give up your top 10 pick. I don't think they would want to give up Kobe White, Zach Levine, Markinen, or Carter Jr. But I guess if you give up Carter Jr., you can look for Mo Bamba. I don't know. I <coughs> Like, I think Holiday would be a great fit. He would help out that team's defense. He'd be that leader in the starting five. And he could play the small forward position because he can guard threes because he's an incredible defender. So I would love that. But I just don't know what assets they're giving up unless it's two first-round picks, including this year's top 10. But it's a weak draft. So I don't know. Uh, Josh Richardson, I think, could be traded this offseason because he's going to opt out of his $10 million player option in 2021, which means the Clip are the Sixers who just paid Simmons, Horford, um, and Harris all this money. They're paying Embiid all this money. Are they going to want to give Richardson 20 mil a year, which he might get on the open market? I don't know, because he was on one of the best contracts in the league where the Heat picked him up there a couple years ago, or re-signed him. So I think it might be better to trade Josh Richardson to maybe get somebody under contract longer, um, or even if it's a first-round pick. So I think a team that could be willing to part way with their first-round pick, say the Bulls don't really specifically like anybody, they get the seventh pick. Maybe they'll trade seven for Josh Richardson, and he can really help out that team's defense. Uh, and Mo Bamba, I guess, would just be their backup center. Uh, but yeah, he's been somebody that's just kind of been behind Nikola Vucevic, and who knows if he will ever even start there or be a full-time starter. So uh, I would like a lot of teams maybe looking at Mo Bamba in the offseason if they can give up a late first or an early second. Uh, the Cavs draft picks Nasir Little and Troy Brown Jr. Uh, obviously, these are guys that, like Nasir Little, I mean, there was like talks about going into the 2019 draft that he could be a top 10 pick and he just fell off because he was a top recruit going to UNC and he disappointed. So, I mean, he would be a nice flyer. I don't know like if they would want to give up like one of their NBA like actual like starters or rotational guys on a good team like Larry and Shooter could maybe be an upgrade for Portland. Uh, maybe that's why they have him here. Like I would say like Jordan Clarkson would have been perfect, but uh, he's obviously in Utah. Maybe Dante Exum, eh, probably not. Um, I'm just trying to think like of the Cavs roster. Maybe Jetty Osman, the Trailblazers would like. They would clear up money off his contract and they get Nasir Leto who can maybe develop. Obviously, they need draft picks. They need a lot. And uh, Troy Brown Jr., just a wing player. Uh, maybe he could do something in Cleveland, but I, I don't really see the, the need. I mean, I guess they need a small forward. We'll see who they draft in this uh, with their top five pick or top seven pick in the 2020 draft. So Dallas, Bradley Beal, CJ McCollum, Rudy Gobert. I mean, what assets? I mean, like, yeah, they would all be great fits to this team. Uh, two good shooters that could do something with the ball in their hands. And obviously, they're playing with one of the best passers in the NBA. Rudy Gobert would be a, a monster defensive front court, or, yeah, front court partner to Rudy, uh, to Christoph Porzingis. 
But what assets? I don't even want to discuss these because there's a 0% chance to get any of these guys. Uh, Denver, Drew Holiday. Man, I've been talking about it. I've been stressing that Drew Holiday would be a great addition to that team. I don't know if it would cost them Michael Porter Jr., if it would cost them Gary Harris, Monte Morrison picks. I don't know, but I really think that they should go after Drew Holiday. Matisse Thibault, Philly's not giving up him, so don't get that. And Alfred Camino, I mean, if they do lose, like, either one of Jeremy Grant and Paul Millsap, Alfred Camino could be a nice defensive replacement um at the four and he would definitely cost them like a second round pick due to his kind of not great contract and he was uh been injury uh prone recently so i think drew holiday is actually like somebody they should really go after but mm, like matisse not happening and alfreak would be a nice low cost uh addition detroit uh draft or yeah draft picks so same as cleveland rebuilding team might as well john collins i mean you already have blake griffin there and you're not flipping Blake Griffin for John Collins. So that's not happening. And Dennis Smith Jr., though, I like that. I mean, if they end up with a metal ball and they want to keep Derrick Rose, then don't do that. But if you're going to have a hole at point guard, yes, do it. Uh, because, I mean, they brought out Reggie Jackson. I think they should trade Derrick Rose on draft night for a first-round pick. Either if you can get a top 15 first-round pick, that would be great. Or you trade Derrick Rose for something. So I think Dennis Smith Jr. would be a nice addition. Like, if, you, if you're if you two point guards next year of a mellow ball on Dennis Smith Jr., that's solid. Or Cole Anthony and Dennis Smith Jr., like, maybe not that. But, like, let's say it's Lamelo and Dennis Smith Jr. I think it's worth giving Dennis Smith Jr. 20 minutes a night and seeing if you could revive his career. Where it's definitely not as stressful and not as much pressure as playing in New York. Uh, so I, I do like that. Golden State... Giannis, well, it's not happening this offseason. At least Giannis, if he doesn't want to come back, maybe it would. And you would have to give up, what, and Andrew Wiggins and your first round pick or cost Clay Thompson. I don't even want to discuss this because I just don't see that happening. What's with John Collins? Does he really think that the Hawks and Collins aren't going to get a contract done extension? Maybe they won't. I mean, Collins on this team, put him at the five? Draymond at the four, Wiggins at the three. If you give up your first round pick, I mean, if they do win the lottery, I mean, if say they get the third pick, like, and they offered that for John Collins, uh, I don't know if Atlanta, like, if they, if Atlanta drops to like six and they can get three and six in this draft and add like a Anthony Edwards and like an Obi Toppin, maybe they would value that because they don't have to spend uh, money on Collins and they can have loads of cap space to try to bring that guy to pair up with Trey Young, maybe. But I don't know. Miles Turner would be great as well. And maybe they, they like, all right, we could get James Wiseman. We could get Anaka Kungu, but we could trade maybe our top five pick for Miles Turner. Maybe that would actually be a really good fit because he's a very underrated player, but I don't know if Indy would want to give up on him. Houston, Miles Turner with what assets? Marcus Aldridge would probably not cost them a lot, but how are they getting their salary cap wise? You would have to throw in Robert Covington or... It would just probably be near impossible because he's making, what, 20 plus? So that's not happening. And Doug McDermott, yeah, they would love shooting and maybe he wouldn't cost them too much because I believe he'll be going to his last year of his contract. Indiana, Gordon Hayward, Karis Avert, and Harrison Barnes, all wing players. Honestly, why get Harrison Barnes when TJ Warren is better? Why get Karis Avert when probably TJ Warren is better right now? Yeah, Gordon Hayward is good. I don't think it's worth it because they're going to probably ask for... Um, DeMontis Sabonis or Turner. I mean, yeah, if you're willing to move over, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I don't think I like any of these three guys just because I think Warren is probably better than Levert and Barnes. And Hayward just doesn't really fit them unless you're now giving up Sabonis, which I don't know. I, I just don't like, really like any of those guys. It's going to be a very interesting offseason for Indiana on what they're going to do uh, with their front court or Victor Oladipo, who will be a pending free agent. I don't think they'll move Oladipo, but uh, Clippers, Kyle Lowry, Steven Adams, Andre Drummond. Um, Drummond would be interesting because maybe if they lose to the Lakers due to them having so much size with JaVale McGee, Dwight Howard, Anthony Davis, they're like, all right, we need someone that's seven foot that can go up against those guys. Um, we have Zubats, but they haven't really played in more than 25 minutes a night in meaningful games. So Drummond or Adams could be that guy too low, maybe costing centers. You could maybe throw in your 2020, oh. but they're very limited on first round picks. So maybe they would have to throw in Kevin Gelly. Maybe Terrence Mann. I'm just trying to think. And like, I don't know if they would want to give up Landry Shamit. Kyle Lowry would be interesting, but I think they might have a bigger need than Kyle Lowry. But you know, maybe that you can get him. I don't know. That means probably Marcus Morris is gone. I'm just trying to think their salary cap situation. But I, I do like maybe getting Adams or Drummond, but that's if they can't beat the Lakers. 
Uh, Lakers. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie healed Rose, another good ball handover. That's a playmaker. I think Dinwiddie, they might not have the assets unless they're trading Kuzma a first. Probably not getting it done. Healed, probably not getting it done with Kuzma a first. But Derrick Rose, Kuzma, and their first this year, I think, I think Detroit would do that. I think you would have to do that if you're Detroit. And I think that would be because Derrick Rose last year in his contract, I don't know if Derrick Rose would want to do that. That's up to Derrick Rose because obviously he's been true professional in Detroit. So they would go to Derrick Rose like, would you be wanting to go there? And if he says yes, uh, you could trade him for that. But if not, then maybe don't do that. But uh, I think Derrick Rose would be a great fit and I think a realistic option for this Lakers team. Memphis, Larry Markkinen. Ooh. I mean, if they could pull it off, but then you're moving Jaron Jackson Jr. to the five, where I think he can thrive at, but you would have a pretty weak rebounding front court with Jaron Jackson Jr. and Markin and Kevin Herter. They already have somebody similar in Dylan Brooks, so maybe it's not worth giving up an asset for him. And Kyle Kuzma. I mean, I don't know. Then at that point, yeah, just go all in on Markin. But they don't have their first round pick this year. I mean, you have Brandon Clark, so, I mean, is Brandon Clark that much worse than Markkinen at the, like, to be willing to give up, like, an extra first or an asset? I don't know. I, I don't really know if I like any of these pickups either. Miami, Giannis, I mean, are you giving up Bam Adebayo? Uh, so, I don't know about, or you're probably giving up Tower Hero, Kendrick Nunn, Duncan Robinson, and two first round picks, but I don't, uh, it's, dumb. it's dumb. I don't want to talk about Giannis trades yet, unless he turns on the Supermax. Embiid, Huh? I mean, if you swap out a bio and like hero for B, I guess, but why would they do that? They wouldn't, that would make sense. And then um, Bradley Beal, yes, that'd be amazing. And maybe Washington is really high on tower hero and they would take none and hero for Beal. And a first. Maybe if they think hero has that much trade value, but um, I, I think Bam should be untouchable unless you're getting Giannis um, or I guess Embiid straight up. Beal, I don't even know if I would move out of Bio for Beal. Just because of the things he does on both ends of the floor. I don't know. I don't know. I would try to keep it strictly to Hero, Nunn, and Duncan Robinson. And maybe their first round picks. Uh, Milwaukee, Chris Paul, Evan Fournier, future first round picks. Fournier, all right. I, I really don't know why they didn't move the Pacers first round pick. That will be around like 18 or 19 in this upcoming. Uh, well, we don't know yet. Uh, wherever they end up in the regular season. But they're not going to be playing with Oladipo. I mean, Chris Paul would be, I mean, yeah, would you, all right, would you flip Bledsoe after what we saw from Chris Paul this year, Bledsoe and the first round pick, the Pacers first round pick, and maybe a future one down the line for Chris Paul? I think the Thunder would have to do that. Maybe just the Pacers first round pick and they'd get that done. I mean, Fournier also would be nice. I guess you could probably use like Ilias Sofa's contract. I, I forget if Ilias Sofa has one year left, but um, I mean, yeah, he, but like Dante DiVincenzo could really be your two in crunch time. So you'd have Bledsoe, DiVincenzo, maybe Matthews, along with um, Middleton, Giannis, and Lopez. Yeah, um, well, without Matthews, I guess, in there. Yeah, so I don't really know if Fournier is really worth giving up an asset for. And future first-round picks, yeah, definitely. Um, Minnesota, Aaron Gordon. Yes. Yes! I think he would actually be a great fit next to Cat. He can space the floor. He's a good defender. And maybe he, you can actually give up a... I mean, what assets? Maybe Orlando would be interesting in interested in Culver if Minnesota drops in the lottery if they go to like seven which I don't know if that's possible I don't I don't think it is but like say they were around seven yeah I'd rather have Aaron Gordon than probably Obi Toppin they're fairly close in age uh so maybe that'd be something Otto Porter Jr yeah they need wing help and maybe he would be a low cost since it's his last year and Frank Neil Aquina yeah if they would give up their second round pick if they have it or maybe a future second for Frank I don't know maybe they would give up not Culver, but like, I'm trying to think like somebody on their roster that would get it done. I don't know. Maybe two seconds would get you Frank. And yeah, they need definitely need defensive help when their two best players aren't known to be good defenders. Uh, the Pelicans, Miles Turner. I like Larry Markkinen. I don't really like that fit with Zion or Ingram. Miles Turner, I think would be great if like they'd be if the Pel like if the Pacers would be willing to take like their lottery pick and Jackson Hayes. Honestly. I do that for Miles Turner. I think he'd be a fantastic fit to the team. He can somewhat space the floor. Not great, but he can. He's a great rim protector. He's a fantastic defender, a great shot blocker. And I think I, I would do that. I would definitely do that if I were them and Duncan Robinson for more shooting. I don't know what they would give up. I don't really like the marketing fit. The Knicks, John Collins, Jared Culver, and Simons. I think Collins would be a really nice fit next to Mitchell Robinson. I really do. But is Atlanta taking Julius Randle? Maybe the Dallas, uh, one of the Dallas picks and the Clippers picks. I don't think so. Um, but I, I would really like that fit next to Mitchell Robinson. Jared Culver, 
I mean, if it's going to cost you maybe a late first round pick, sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would do that. But I'm not giving up like your top five pick or whatever your top 10 pick, RJ. Maybe a Frank for Culver swap, but I don't really see Minnesota would do that. Maybe Frank and a. Maybe the Clippers first for Culver. I don't know. I'm an Anthony Simons. I really didn't really like that for the Knicks. Uh, OKC, draft picks. Yes, keep getting the draft picks. Mikel Bridges. Oh, yes. I would love that. They desperately need kind of that small forward. Um, we'll see if Gallo leaves. And I don't know what he's going to cost, but I would like that. And Dennis Smith Jr., kind of like the same reasoning for Detroit. Take a fire on him. Why not? Maybe Chris Paul can get him right. Uh, Orlando scoring. Levine, Levert, Griffin. They need scores. Blake, hate that, would not like that. Unless you're swapping Gordon for... No, no. I like Isaac at the four, and I don't like the Blake fit with Vucevic either. Levert, yes, would be great, and maybe they would do an Aaron Gordon for Levert swap. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe something like that. Um, I would like Levert, and Levine would be perfect. Perfect. You would have faults Levine. Figure out your small forward. Maybe it's Okiki. Isaac at the four, and then Vucevic at the five. I really like Isaac next to Vucevic. And then maybe you would do Bamba, Bamba and Fournier, or Bamba and Gordon for Levine. The Bulls wouldn't do that. You might have to throw in your first round pick as well, but I would like Zach Levine and Levert on the team. They need offensive help. Philly, Drew Holiday, perfect, but how are you getting Drew Holiday? You're not giving up Simmons or Embiid. Pelicans aren't taking Tobias Harris, probably, or um, uh, Al Horford. You might have to do Thibel and whatever first round picks you got, but I don't even know if the Pels would do that, so... Probably not happening. Same with Heald. What assets you're using. And then Chris Paul. I mean, if you could do Al Horford, two first round picks, maybe the Thunder would do it. Maybe they would. But I don't know. Maybe that would be more of a midseason trade. Phoenix, marketing. Yes, I would love marketing on this team. I would even give up Ubre for marketing. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they would take Cam Johnson, Mikel Bridges, and your first this year. Actually, they could. And I think a marketing next to Aiden would be a really nice fade. Gordon. Yes, I think you do that without giving up Kelly Oubre. I think that'd be fantastic. Um, I think he'd be a really nice fit next to uh, Aiden because he can space the four and play defense. I really want Gordon to get traded this offseason, if you couldn't tell. And Collins would be a good fit as well. Um, and yeah, uh, like a nice four spacing four next to a five that can. Uh, Portland, uh, Ben Simmons, Gobert, Richardson. Is this Ben Simmons for McCollum? Philly wouldn't do that. Uh, I don't think so. Unless you're now giving up your lottery pick and Anthony Simons and Nasir Little, maybe. Um, and was Ben Simmons and Lillard that much better than Lillard and McCollum? Gobert, yeah, if you could move Nurkic. Nurkic, maybe. If Gobert, if that's if like the tensions are there and they would be willing to move Gobert. And Richardson. I would give up your lottery pick for Richardson if Philly is like willing to part ways with him because they think he's not he's gonna demand too much money and this will be the last year with him. Sacramento, Michael Porter Jr. If you're giving up healed for Michael Porter Jr., maybe. Maybe that's the guy you want to return. Kuzma yeah maybe i don't know i don't really like that fit and allen is allen that much better than holmes he's definitely better but is it worth giving up an asset probably not uh san antonio draft picks yes rebuilding uh canard don't know if detroit would do that and terry rosier um hmm. terry rosier is an interesting fit uh they don't really need any more guards uh toronto Giannis. what who are you trading for Giannis? who who um, I don't know. I don't know who they're trading for, Giannis. Uh, Steven Adams. Yeah, I guess if you're letting go of Marcus Saul, uh, and he might, and he'll be an expiring, so he wouldn't cost you too much. And Nemanja Bialica, um, who I would actually like on that team. Yeah, I would give up maybe your 30th pick if or 29th for him. Uh, Utah Bialica as well. I think if Sacramento is willing to give up him for a second or a young player or a late first, I would pick him up. I think teams should definitely go after Bialica. Kevin Love. Yeah, but you move moving Bojan to the three, maybe? Um, I don't know. Maybe you would have to throw in Conley to make the money work, and then maybe Conley in a first, and the reason Cleveland would do that because Conley can develop one of their young guards, and they get a first for love? Maybe. Maybe. And Zach Collins. Yeah, he'd be a nice fit. And then Washington, Tower Hero, that's for Bradley Beal. Michael Porter Jr., probably for Bradley Beal. And Julius Randle. I guess they do have a kind of a hole at the four if they don't think Hashimura is a four, but Bertans is coming back, so... I mean, I don't think any team should be traded for Julius Randle. So yeah, that is going to be for me. I hope you guys enjoyed. There was a lot of repetitive players, but I kind of talked about where their fit were. That might have been a pretty long video. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you guys do enjoy uh, these type of videos. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Disagree with anything I said. Maybe give me your favorite team's top three trade targets. I'd be interested in that. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys next video. And Ultimate Rebuilding Series out tomorrow. Peace.